so I'm almost home. Um, I went to an auditorium and I had to walk in and then they had like X's you know to give them your patient ID and then they asked if you had symptoms which I do you know and then they swab both of your nostrils and then I was done so then so I couldn't record because they said no cameras in the building um, as testing was going on which I understand because it you know HIPAA um, working in the healthcare field you know if you if you're aware of that you know what I'm talking about it's just for safety reasons and you know common respect and dignity um, so I'm just heading home it was really quick I'm glad it was quick it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it was it burns a little bit but you know I've had worse pain <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that it was that quick and it's done and over with so now I just got four to six days to wait to get my test results which is ridiculous um, but no, I'm just gonna go home and rest um, I'm gonna try to maybe do a Reiki session tonight um, primarily on myself and maybe once I feel a little bit better I can start doing your guys's healings I just haven't been implementing Reiki like I said before in my daily practice and it's showing because I haven't been sick in over a year and then I went back to my job and my immune system goes way down like it's just unreal um, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out how me and my husband's gonna stay away from each other because um, he had an appointment on the phone and he's got to get tested, but he doesn't have to drive as far as I did He literally goes to our hospital in town. I was like, I hate you <laughs> Not literally, but you know what I mean? I was just like I had to drive 40 minutes and you drive like three minutes. It's annoying It's really annoying, but I'm grateful that you know, I got the experience to drive out of town again I haven't drove out of town in probably a couple months so I gotta look at the positive side of it. I'm trying to really train my mind to think of the positives, you know. Um, I got out of the house. It wasn't just based on work, so. Um, I just, I just have a really bad stomach ache right now. I'm sorry if I seem a little off. I just don't feel the best, and I'm just ready to get home and just relax and cuddle with my fur baby, but I'm not gonna cuddle like, and I'm not gonna like cuddle with her like I usually do, like have her up by my face because I don't want her to get sick. So I just mainly like kiss her forehead real quick and I'll just, you know, pet her after I wash my hands um, and tell her I love her. Like, I just don't want, I don't, I think animals can get it, but I'm not sure. I probably need to educate myself because I sound ignorant right now, but um, <clears throat> I just don't want to expose her any more than she's already been exposed with me showing symptoms. So my husband's like, well, I'll have to sleep on the couch, you know, because if you're positive and I get a negative test, I, you know, and I'm like, don't say that. That's going to be weird, you know. I think I'd rather have me sleep on the couch than him because he has a horrible neck. You know, and he lifts heavy, heavy um, things at work, and my neck and back has been feeling fine, so it's, you know, his neck hasn't been feeling good, so I think I'd rather sleep on the couch and let him and Dex have the, the bed. That way I can get out of that bedroom, because I feel like I'm always in that, our bedroom, like, Unless I'm in the divination room, which I really need to focus all my energy and all my um, positive mindsets on my business and getting feeling better and really amplifying my daily um, routine so that I can have more success because right now I've just been kind of like having these, like I said earlier, having these poor me days where I just don't want to do nothing, 
and I feel sorry for myself because I work where I work and you know just blah 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 which I know I sound very ungrateful but I do love the clients I work with I think what just bothers me is that I don't feel like they're getting the care that they deserve and I know I can't do any better so I can't really judge but I don't know it's just a very hard situation to be around being an empath and knowing these clients since I've been a child some of them and then other ones that you know recently just got here and just had a hard time with this virus it's just I don't know it's a lot you know it takes up when you're a caregiver I know most of you are that you know kind of watch my channel or our patrons you know what I'm talking about when you even if you're not a caregiver you are and you kind of everyone kind of is in their everyday life you know if they're mothers or their fathers or their aunts or uncles or you know you understand because you're taking care of another individual or your life is surrounded by caregiving if you think about it your self cares around that you know personal care so it's it's hard you know in this day and age, it's so easy to be neglected. We're so distracted and things. And I just keep trying to better myself, you know. And I and I, I do. I fall back in bad habits again. Ooh, I wish I could show you that. That was beautiful. But basically, someone done, like, a beautiful graffiti. And it's like, um, like a fireworks sh uh, shop. And it had a bunch of paintings on it. And it was absolutely stunning. Whoever done that art is just incredible. They had such beautiful, bright um, colors and palettes they used on the side of the building. Dang, I really wish I would have caught that for you guys. You know, if I drive back through, um, I don't know when that'll be, but if it's ever, if I ever go back through Knox again, because I'm in Knox, Indiana, which is 20 minutes away from my house. So when I, if I ever go back this way and I come home and I happen to capture that, it was awesome looking. But it had like a lot of um, purple and reds and, but it was like magenta and like neon colors. It was absolutely stunning. And I've just been really um, wanting more bright colors. Usually I'm kind of a darker color person, like dark blue and black and I wear so much black at home like if you see most of my outfits black you know or blue dark blue or purple um but yeah I've been really I've been really getting into like baby pinks and I don't know why and I have this like kind of reminds me of a oh that scares me every time someone does that um okay so there's like two lanes and these people like come out of um like a store or a restaurant and they kind of like have to go like this to like merge into the lane i always feel like they're gonna like hit me that's why i was like oh because there was an older woman and she was wasn't really paying attention i was like oh my gosh it scared me um it reminds me of uh, me and my family because do you guys do this? You, I, I admit it, I do it too. If you're the passenger and you're getting freaked out how the driver's driving or just how people around you is being when you're that person's driving, you actually think you can like it's like a student driver where you have extra uh, an extra gas brake and so you're like braking and, and pushing the gas. And it's not there, you know, it's like an imaginary thing. But I do that too. You grab the dash and you're like trying to slam on the brakes and you're the passenger. Like, I, I, if you guys have ever done that, comment below so I know I'm not the only crazy one that does that crap. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of random and stupid, but, you know, it's the truth. And I just like to be kind of open and... Um, honest and authentic about what what it's like being with me without you know the professional facade I guess you could say which I I try to feel like I'm I feel like I'm being professional most of the time but 
I mean, there's a side of me that is just unprofessional and just kind of stupid but and crazy, but you gotta laugh. Like, I found that that is honestly love and laughter is the best medicine. Aside, I love my Reiki, of course, and my herbs and my crystals and my prayers, but I'm telling you, that that's, you gotta laugh, you know, because this world is just so stressful. <sighs> if I wasn't supposed to be quarantined right now, I would go get a sandwich. They have an awesome little deli here, I think I've mentioned it in the last vlog, maybe. Um, it's like a little, um, it's like a little deli slash, um, gas station, but, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's, um, trying to think where they're from. They're not from around here, they're from a different state, but I want to say, like, she kind of has like a Polish slash Germany, German, you know, accent. I don't know how else to explain it. And she's, I love the way she talks and she makes the best food ever. And her deli has a great amount of like chicken sandwiches and meat. And so I like to go there. recording this so I wanted to just see what you guys are doing you know what your plans are or have you had to quarantine since this whole pandemic have you had to get tested like I just want to know I really want you guys to be healthy and stay positive and you know I think we can help each other out like I know I need work I need help I need you guys just as much as you need me and I, that's what I tell my clients too like there's some days where I'm just not mentally there and like I'll just forget things and they'll be like hey you gonna give me my meds yet and I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry you know and that's important I mean it's embarrassing but it happens I'm human you know everyone's human and they mess up but like I think that's what bothers me the most about my job is when people become too comfortable and they become kind of cocky about the job and then they don't realize that they're working with individuals' lives. And, you know, once you get comfortable, you do that. You forget things that are very essential to their lives. Like, hey, don't forget their meds. Like, hey, don't forget they have these allergies. You can't give them that when they eat dinner, you know. It's a lot to think about we being in a group home setting is I like supervised group living settings um, I think they are beneficial to some individuals and other times I feel like it's it's not you know the best thing for them but I do feel like it's worth a try and I feel like the concept is very positive but I feel like now it's, they don't, you know, with the dual diagnosis, they don't know where to put these people. And so they get these clients that their level of care is so high that surrounding these other peers in the home is a form of like decline in quality of life because you're putting all your efforts to the higher leveled, um, clients that need the extra help so it's just that's where it's hard you know it's and I'm not expecting perfection you know it's life but I've considered like maybe this is part of my path like as much as I hate to admit it maybe that's what I'm meant to do in this life is to be you know a caregiver a direct support worker as we call ourselves at a group home because there's so many people that just don't understand everything that goes into it, you know, and I've been a DSP, I've been, which is a direct support worker, I've been, you know, a Q, and I know, which is a qualified, um, qualified disabled, you know, it's basically just a qualified person 
watching over that group of individuals, unqualified, I can't even think of it right now, it's fancy spancy, but it's really not that, you know, charming, it's, Q sounds better than QDDP, you know, like, qualified, um, direct disability professional or something like that, I can't remember, they've changed it so many times that I don't even recall what it's actually legitly supposed to be called right now. I love that job just as much as I like being a, a DSP. And I thought I'd like being a DSP more, but I feel like being a Q, you watch over a lot of the little details. And I feel like a lot of people weren't getting the direct care that they deserved from the higher ups. And I, of course, I've seen how much the higher ups have but the DSPs get a lot of, um, they don't get as much, I, I'm trying to find the right word, you could probably, you're probably saying it like 10 times in the screen as you're watching this, if you are continuing to watch this, um, they're not getting support, they're not getting the, the gratitude that they deserve, I guess. But I kind of went off on a tangent there, and I don't know why, but I, maybe that's something that needs to come out, I don't know. But, I want to know what your guys' job is, like if you, if you feel guided to, what your profession is, what is your positive about the job, like what has really made you feel like you can integrate your purpose into that job and then where is it where you feel like you're not f completely fulfilling your life purpose because I feel like my life purpose goes beyond just individuals with disabilities I feel like my gifts can go to all groups of people just not that certain population like I've always been very connected to the elderly population. I feel like I can connect with them better than the children. Um, and I like children. I really do. I wanted my own children, but I don't think I'm going to be able to have my own children. Um, but I just feel like there's something beautiful about the history of a person. And when they're elderly, they have a whole world to tell you about. You know, and kids, they have a whole world to tell you about too, but a lot of it is their dreams and their ambitions, and that's just as beautiful, but I feel like elderly can really give you lessons. They can really help you through seeing why it's important to stay humble and why it's important to not judge because you're going to go through that time of your life too eventually if you're lucky enough, and it's important to listen. So, that's just my thoughts. I'm having a hot flash, so I have the air conditioner on, which is probably not the smartest thing to do at all. <clears throat> I just really want to go to bed right now. But it's about up to 20 minutes now. I don't know why why I let myself ramble this much. Sorry guys, but I hope this is somewhat entertaining or laughable or something. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you, um, but I will be back. I'm going to try to integrate a bunch of clips to make a vlog. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of like my vlog of my quarantine experience. And stay safe. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.